Hi there everyone, this is Fates Fanboy speaking and welcome back to Inazum 11 Go Strikers. Episode 9, time is moving by really fast. Or maybe my jam-packed university schedule is just making it feel that way. Regardless, we have another match on the menu for you today. We just dipped our toes into the second story map, that being the International Arc. We beat Neo National with a staggering score of 10 to nil. And today we're moving on to our first actual international opponent, being Orpheus, the Italian national team. But before we do that, we first have to recruit another character, of course. At the end of last episode, we took in Zine, as per RXR's request. Now, that request was a two-part request, but that doesn't mean I'll be fulfilling the two parts of the request consecutively. I will eventually complete the trio because I cannot deny that having two co-op moves at our disposal will be a massive help in the long run, but for today I think I'm going to first fulfill someone else's request instead. So with that in mind, let's head over to the scout menu and we are actually going to stop by at Neo National because Malgesto L requested we recruit Mark Hill Valley. Quite the... um... I'll call it an original choice, but I don't think this is entirely bad. He does start off with C Guard, which is very helpful as a defender. The only detriment that's really glaringly obvious is that he only has access to a level 1 defense move in Earthquake, which isn't too great, admittedly, but there is one big boon lurking, and that is, namely, that recruiting Hill Valley means that we're halfway to getting Infinite Wall on King, which, I'm not going to lie, would be an insane asset to our team. And I'm I'm not exaggerating here. I think Infinite Wall is one of the strongest keeper moves in this game. And Mark Hill Valley is an essential part of that. So, welcome aboard, Mark. Now the second part of Infinite Wall is of course Mr. Argy Bargy down here. <laughs> Odds of anyone wanting him on the team. Very low, but if you do want to have me use Infinite Wall, please, then someone request Argy Bargy, I guess. Or if, if push comes to shove, I'll just I'll brush your comments aside and do it myself. But while we're still on Neo National, as you can see, I recruited King's Neo National version off screen, as I think was only fair, considering we did have the original version already, and this is basically a better version. I did coordinate with the person who originally requested King on the team, my best friend in real life, which version of King he wanted specifically, because recruiting this version of King actually means that you also get access to the Royal Redux version of King. But he specifically wanted the Neo National version, so that is what we will be rocking out with. We don't have much wiggle room anymore for new players, admittedly, but we can still ditch the Raymond version of Steve in favor of Hill Valley here. Then, over the course of this last week, I have made some adaptations to our team. As you can see, this is quite the different lineup from our original one. Uh, I did run one practice match with this formation, and I have to say I'm quite content, actually. I took up the recommendation from one of you guys to put Shadow as a Libero, and I actually think that was an excellent recommendation, because it didn't even occur to me before that Shadow has Demon Cut, which is a blocking move, so he'll be perfect down here in the middle. Then I did switch out Semford for Zine for this one match, just to give Zine some exposure and to play into RxR's recommendation, and in the course of switching out players, I actually found out that there is a lot of players with different moves, or actually just moves that the game doesn't automatically equip. For example, I found out that Zine not only comes with his, well, inherent Meteor Blade, he also comes with Extend Zone, a level 3 move that they just don't put on him for some reason. Then, dear Nathan over here has finally decided to be useful in this form, he actually comes with a level 2 dribble move. He already gets access to Fujin no Mai in his Dark Empress version. You don't even have to wait for his international version. Um, and I have to say, this is an insane improvement of a Flurry Dash. Then, as concerns his blocking moves, he comes with two level 3 blocking moves. One of those being his, well, his native Bushin defense, clone defense. The second option he gets is actually Air Bullet. So... I don't believe it was actually a case of leveling up his, his blue bar. 
it was rather just a question of recruiting this Nathan. Then any more things I have to inform you about? Yes, Bellatrix does come with Meteor Shower, apparently, as a dribble move, but Matador Feint is a higher level and thus stronger, so there's no real use in that. And the same goes for Rosie, who also comes with Presto Turn, or Hey Presto, as a dribble move, but she goes with Olympus Harmony, which is level 3, which is better than Presto Turn, which is a level 1 dribble move. So again, no value in that. Oh yes, looking at Rusty, I realize some of our players got a level up again, as concerns the blue bar. As you can see, Rusty has his blue bar filled up to the max now. Not all of his stats have improved. Actually, none of them have improved since last time. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the second level of the blue bar achieves. I think it might up the threshold of some um, max stats, but that's, that's my best guess right now. In any case, he has access to 5 A stats, which is quite alright for me. He's not a quote-unquote special player, so this is the most that you can really expect from a player like this. And I'm very content with my boy Rusty. Then the same goes for Soundtown, who also reached the second level of his blue bar. Similar to Rusty, he only gets up to A rank. He does get up to A rank in all stats, but in all fairness, he doesn't really need... Well, he literally does not need the A rank in catch. But still, it's, it's a nice thing to have, I suppose. Then, finally, I also believe Afrodi reached the second level of his blue bar, still rocking with the S kick, but yeah, we're not going to invest in it right now because we do have a better version of Afrodi coming up in a little bit. I hope, at least. For the time being, we are going to switch someone out. I think in the interest of leveling up our players, I have to... Ah, I don't want to, but I, I... You know what? No, I don't have to. I'll take up... Soundtown. I'll take out Soundtown for Mark Hill Valley, put Rusty in the midfield, and then this should be quite good for a formation for our upcoming match. So yeah, I suppose we'll just jump right into that. On to Orpheus we go. Yes, our Italian friend Bianchi is already waiting for us. Ikea indeed. Orpheus, three shields, nothing too special. I did promise I would talk a bit about my surprise regarding their inclusion in this game. So that is exactly what I will do during the match, I suppose. But yeah, I can just express again, just categorically, that I was very surprised to see Orpheus had their own team. Because again, I don't believe they're that consequential in the anime. If you wanted to pick a really consequential team for the international arc, I suppose you would have had to choose someone like Fire Dragon, perhaps? Fire Dragon was very, very key in actually uniting in Azuma National, but... I'm rambling, that's something I should be doing during the match, not before the match. We've done everything we can, we might have a quick peek at the anime team. Yeah, and this is going to be very fun because I actually have no clue what any of these guys are called. Actually, let's entertain this, let's see if I can actually name some guys. I know this is Blasi, uh, Bianchi obviously, I think this might be Raphael, probably not. This is Angelo, this is Diavolo, I know that much. This is Anton, I remember that one. And then I know there's a Giorgio in there somewhere, which I think might be this guy. But that's about the extent of my Italian national team knowledge. Now, they have some pretty surprising moves in their arsenal. But as you can see, their stats are nothing too threatening. So, we'll just be trying our hardest. I don't suspect this will be a very difficult match. But it'll be a match that will advance us nonetheless. So let's dive into it. Here we go! Now this is Atlantic Stadium, I believe. Quite embarrassing in hindsight to call Zoo Stadium Atlantic Stadium, and this is Atlantic Stadium. Ah, yes. That is international music, always good to hear, always brings back the memories. I do believe this is the music that played when Italy's team unlocked quote-unquote, um, Catanaccio counter. Yes, now I know for sure. That drop is very recognizable. Okay, Max, we might get off an early Revolution V here. Admittedly, Max's kick isn't fantastic, so I doubt this is going to go in. Steve is much more potent in that regard, but... Blasi is going to go for a gigant wall, which is fine. Yeah, that's about what I expected. That's perfectly fine, still enough time left in the game. 
to work ourselves into an advantage here. So, while I'm now playing, I'm going to attempt to rant about Orpheus in this game. Or well, not really rant, just give my opinion about their inclusion in this game. Because what I think, I'm all for including, well, fuller teams really. Fuller teams from the international arc. I don't think Orpheus was the right choice. And that's 1-0 to nil, by the way. Excellent, excellent start. Suzuno, Gazelle, always reliable. All reliable, but yes. I, again, I don't think Orpheus was the right call for a full-blown team in this game. They were quite consequential. Thank you, Giorgio, who I don't even know is really Giorgio. But Orpheus, Orpheus, yeah, I, I don't know. They didn't do so much. They were quite consequential um, in the sense that they finally put an end to Ray Dark's machinations. But outside of that, I, I don't really know what they did. Like, sure, they stopped Mr. K, they kind of traumatized him with the memories of his past, and then he turned himself in. I believe that's the, the case here. And Anton actually has a dribble move, alright. Very interesting to see. Well, that's one thing they did right with this team, at least. They give them unexpected moves, which I can very much appreciate, of course. Alright, let's see what this guy has. Nothing stronger than Diabolical Cut, it seems. But yeah, that's that's the thing that Orpheus solved. They solved the whole Raid Dark, Mr. K, yada yada problem. Um, but I don't think that really makes them outweigh teams like Fire Dragon, who really united the entire team of Inazuma National and actually were a very threatening opponent. And the fact that they already included Whittingill and Beacons, aka Torch and Gazelle's Fire Dragon versions, in this game, and they also include Changzu Choi, the captain. Yeah, that just kind of makes me wonder why they just didn't include the entirety of Fire Dragon when they were such a pivotal team in the third uh, the third season. Oh yeah, Bianchi has a dribble move in this game. I almost forgot. And there's the infamous Fame Bullet. Fame Bullet. Very nice one. Air Bullet we've been hearing so much about. And I can actually immediately show off Zine's X10 zone. Again, no clue why he has this. I thought he might have uh, Tenku Otoshi instead, but apparently not. It is perfectly fine though, as long as he can reliably score. Which for the time being he cannot. And you know what? I actually thought my little essay about Orpheus was going to take longer, but it, it didn't. Excellent block, Afrodi, thank you. Just body blocked a guy into actually not doing a special, not getting a special off. Yeah, teams that would have made more sense. I'm saying Fire Dragon, I'm saying probably the Kingdom, so Brazil's national team. I'm also going to mention, while I brush past this second goal by Suzuno. I want to say a team like, uh, not the Queen's Knights probably, because while that match was cool, I don't know if they were if it was that important in actually making the team better. So that's one thing I'm going to look at. Yeah, that's Photon Flash, I guess. Exactly. They brought back some really obscure moves in this game. Something I didn't expect. Like, I actually uh, discovered recently that... Cannon comes with Block Circus. Like, for what reason? <laughs> yeah, it's a funny move, sure, but like... What reason did you have to put Block Circus in this game, right? When you're only going to put it on one guy. It's, it's fun nonetheless. I like discovering the different moves that people get in this game. And seeing how little sense they make sometimes. And there was no one there, okay. 
Very good. Strategizing. So I'm actually going over the different international teams in my head here, seeing who would have been more applicable. Max, please. Uh, you're probably going to get past, but that's fine. That is perfectly alright. Gives me more time to think. So Orpheus, there was... Right, there was America's team. Uh, were they called Unicorn? I feel like they were, probably. They were pretty cool. They could have put in like an international version of Eric and Bobby. Uh, they could have put in Mark and Kruger. And then there's also... What else did they play against? Argentina, I suppose? Though Argentina wasn't that great of a team, and also the match wasn't that great because Mark was missing, and... Oh dear, what do we do without Mark? We cannot win without Mark. But yeah, it, it was a match on the... Oh, that was a weird volley. Never seen that before. That's alright. Oh, was just going to that rep, but I didn't have enough time. That's fine. I wonder if I can fill this entire match with just me talking about Orpheus as a team. Let's see, I did notice... Mm, yes, Nathan is getting very low on CP. So we are going to switch the guy out for Soundtown. Soundtown is going to come back. And then... Um, yeah, we should be good. Kind of sad that they haven't shot yet. Because I did want to show off King a tiny bit. The new and improved King. I know what would actually have been cool though. Italy would actually have been an interesting team to include if they'd implemented tactics into this game somehow. Because the Catanaccio counter, one of my favorite tactics, especially given the animation it gets in the game, with Bianchi just doing the little the little fake out towards Jude and then steal the ball. Oh that's such an amazing scene. It always gives me goosebumps, especially the first time I saw it. Like, when you just see that scene, and you hear Bianchi's voice actor, it goes so well together. Same with this Revolution V scene, actually. Though the Catanaccio counter scene shows up more often, and is actually longer, if memory serves. I'm also at a loss as to why these defenders get Barbarian Shield. Why? You could have given them something else. Something that makes sense in the context of Italy's team, perhaps? Oh well. Could have given him... What's it called again? Margaret, ma macaroni Spaghetti, or whatever it's called. <laughs> Just completely ignoring that's a keeper move, for whatever reason. And also ignoring that exists, for whatever reason. And also ignoring that it's on Brazil's keeper, for whatever reason. Thank you very much, Orion. Anyway, I think Suzuno is going to go for the hat trick here. Probably, hopefully. It doesn't really matter with how much we win against this team, but I suppose we we must ride the wave of that 10 to 0 against Neo National, right? And it actually is a hat trick. Very nice. Suzuno, very solid addition to the team. Very happy I got to recruit him. Because he just works. He just gets a Northern Impact off and he works. Ah, free shot. The one move that got past Mark and we actually got to show off King. There he is, new National King. I did put Drill Smasher on him instead of Full Power Shield because I feel it is a better move. I don't know what makes me feel that way, it's just a gut feeling. They both take up as much TP, like an equal amount of TP. I believe both cost 60 TP off the top of my head. But I find Drill Smash for a cooler move, and I think it's it's stronger, probably. More about Orpheus, yeah, no, not really. They're kind of not great, given the consequences, given the state in which they were put in. Also given the severe lack of just, I guess, 
pivotal value they had in the third season. Yeah, I'm not going to risk repeating myself. Oh, that was a horrific pass, okay. You never quite do get anything out of passing it into the 16 like that. I believe giving, or at least completing a header or a volley like that does increase your energy bar a bit. Shadow, please. Oh, he can't actually trigger it. And it's mark time. Hill Valley time. Okay, he does get past again. It is a level 2 dribble move after all, so I can't really blame the guy. What can he do with his Earthquake? Nothing, realistically. Oh, that was horrific! Oh no! Okay, he saved it. It's probably the worst pass I've made in this series so far. And then we have Isa, who can't do anything. She doesn't have a shot. Zine can. If we can just break through the defense. Oh boy. He is most likely going to get blocked by Anton, because he does have his energy bar filled up, so that's most likely going to be a Barbarian Shield. Unless he just doesn't trigger it. Excellent. Uh, still kind of skeptical about our chances here, but... Yeah. Zin still has to get used to the team, I suppose. And to be fair, Orpheus was fired up, so they did have increased power. So we'll just get rid of that real quick. Shadow is getting low, which is not great, because that means we have a Libero. Well, basically, we don't have a Libero anymore. Unless we want to count Rusty. Nice. Nice jump. Volley. Okay. Oh, very nice. Didn't even input that, but thank you very much, Afrodi. Get away from Anton, please. Okay. And actually, seeing Aphrodite's speed here, it's quite menacing. Like, our players are finally picking up on speed. It took them long enough. But I believe that's also because I set some different key players. Like, I believe I gave Max and someone else uh, the key. And that's 4 to nil. Yeah. I'm, I, <laughs> I notice I'm stopping a lot in the middle of my sentences, which seriously disrupts my train of thought. A little bit of self-realization there. But I try to be... <laughs> I try to be as up-to-date as I can, I'm sorry. Commentating and playing a game like this... It's quite taxing. Truth be told. Okay. There's the... Again with the Barbarian Shield. Why? Okay, for Diabolo it makes sense because it's literally just Italian for Devil. Um... Should, should have given him go to hell, honestly. <laughs> but no. That's reserved for the Dark Angels. Okay, we are going to go for his level 3 move, which is going to be Beast Fang. I'm going to spoil you. It's simply his strongest move. He does also have Drill Smasher V2, but I'm not entirely fond of that. I do want some diversity in my shots, truth be told. And I think with this, we're going to actually achieve the 5 to nil. Hopefully. Waiting in suspense. Crossing my fingers. It's literally going to do nothing for us, story-wise, but it would be nice to see. We do like the big numbers, there we go. Oh, four goals in one game. Is that a testament? to how good Elemental Advantage is? Probably not. Because, as you know, Elemental Advantage is scuffed against me, obviously. Oh, Susano is so fast. It's actually insane. Did I see someone come sprinting in from the corner of my eye? Does this guy have a co-op move? Surely not. Oh, uh, well, I guess... I. Mm, do I want to find out? Probably not. Because King is low on TP, so I'm afraid that's going to be it. It's going to be curtains. 5 to nil, Man. Kind of tearing through this route. At least so far. I think we've seriously improved our team over these last few episodes. And especially with that little 
shift information I did over the course of last week, I think we have a really solid team going. And that's Max with a level up, it seems. Very nice. Let's see what his stats look like now. That's the support ring. What I want. There we go. All right. Some clean stats, honestly. Looks like he can reach S control. Quite good. I think control makes it so that you can jump over sliding tackles and actually just not, you know, brainlessly sprint after the ball. Instead, you can move immediately. But besides that, yeah, honestly, pretty solid stats. That's B speed. We always appreciate speed in this house. And then I don't think there's anything concerning our friendship. Might as well check our friendship between, yes, Hill Valley and King. That's excellent. 12% from one game. All right. All right. I think if we want infinite wall, we need to have 100%. Uh, also with Bargy and with Bargy and King. That is something for a later concern. As I keep saying. There we go! Claimed victory in the Condor Stadium. Which I still am not entirely sure if it is the Condor Stadium. Oh, look at that! Two paths just simultaneously opened. Damn. I was under the impression that only the right path would open. But let's have a quick gander at what we can get then. It looks like we can get one match there. We can get a secret player. Another secret player. Ch treasure chest and another team. Now that is the America Stadium, but as I said, regrettably, the American national team is not in this game. Instead, they put in Orpheus for whatever reason. And this, I, I'm suspecting one of these might be in Azuma National. I dearly hope one of them is in Azuma National, because if they are, we are picking up my favorite character next episode. But I suppose there's nothing else for it but to just check out, right? First going to claim some secret players, looks like. Beacons! Okay, then I was... <laughs> Yo! My man! No, then I was completely mistaken about how you get this guy. Um, perhaps I'm thinking about the first game too much, but in the first game you only got beacons after recruiting... Uh, what's it called again? International All-Stars Afrodi. And the same went for Whittingill. But it looks like you actually have to beat him in a minigame this time. Excellent, we'll do just that. Yeah, I just, it's completely slipped my mind that they just adjusted some of these recruitment methods for some of these players. The same happened for Cannon, who in the first game you needed to recruit by... Oh, that's, that's got a sting. That's got a sting. How's this minigame even safe? This is not safe! You're breaking your back, Rusty. Come on. But again, I stopped in the middle of my sentence. The same went for Cannon in the first game who you actually needed to recruit by getting all the versions of Mark. I believe, at least. Correct me if I'm wrong. But they also just made him a recruitable player. Oh, Rusty, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, my man. I do not mean to give you a back pain, but alas, it seems it has to be that way. Let's see if we can get multiple in one shot, actually. There we go, three in one. That is some excellent value. A little bit of a volley going? Yes. Oh, you oh, how did you miss? Well, we're still going to win quite convincingly, it looks like. 21 to 9. I think that's enough to convince Torch here. Beacons, technically, to join us. Or to at least make himself disposable. That's, that's not the right word. Uh, I'm just going to uh, ignore that. Available. How did I not think of available? How did I think of disposable first? No, available is what I was looking for. Anyway, we got Beacons, one of my favorite players. My second favorite player, actually. Um, but as the nature of this run dictates, I will not be picking him up. You know, I've already exhausted my veto by saying in advance that I will be picking up Hawkins as my own pick, kind of. And I, I guess I kind of cheated with Rusty here. But come on, we cannot ditch Rusty after all he's done for us. And we'll get a manual on this one, because my timing is impeccable. Yes! Okay, that is, uh, that looks like a control manual, judging from the characters. And then we'll get to discover who our first pick is for this next team. Edogar! 
International All-Stars, alright. That is an excellent team to face. Um, so I think I might already be leaning towards them. So unless this next team is in a Zuma National, I think we'll be facing the International All-Stars in the next episode. But I expect this Wittingill, yes. Yes, this is Wittingill, alright. Um, right, so they had a split path basically with Beacons and the International All-Stars on the one side, and Wittingill and another team on this side. Does this mean that we'll be replacing Gazelle for Wittingill? Yes, it absolutely does, because Wittingill is kind of cracked in this game. He actually gets access to multiple S-Stats, if I recall. Um, and I, I don't know entirely what the point of this game is. I think it's literally the same as... Oh boy, okay. Yeah, this is just the tree minigame, except with more RNG, I suppose. This is actually... Oh, and with penguins, apparently. Oh, this is really hard to focus on, if I'm going to be completely frank. Oh god, I'm going to lose, surely not. I just have to kick as hard as I can, right? Or miss twice, sure. I'm going to steal that one. I'm going to save that one, because our reaction time is insane. And so is Wittingill's. Oh, it's kind of kind of close. But yeah, as as far as efficiency goes, I don't see why you'd ever go for this mini game over the tree mini game. Sure, this one is probably much more fun in that it's unpredictable. But if you want to get a lot of points, if you want to get a combo going, you want to get as much friendship slash TP as you can. You will pick the tree mini game and not this one. We got Wittingill. What's that? 890 to 500? That is excellent. There's two new players at our disposal. Not disposable, as I said before. And that is also access to another enemy team, whom I don't know who they are. We'll find out. Inazuma National? Yes! Oh! Inazuma National, finally! Oh, boys. I'm sorry for all of you who wanted to see the International All-Stars, but we're going to be picking up Hawkins next episode. I can promise you that. Alright, back in the club room, back to do some final wrapping up, as I said before. Now, we are going to scroll down, because there is one player we obviously have to pick up. We have to pick up Wittingill, because look at this. Look at this, he just starts out with two B stats, and he will be able to reach S rank in those stats and A rank in all the others which makes him so incredibly valuable for this team. And it's overall just an upgrade to the Wittingill we already have. Now, we're left only 340 points, but I believe that is actually a perfect amount to fulfill the second part of RxR's request, being to pick up Wits for some more synergy, for some more co-op moves, actually, in Space Penguin and Supernova, which I hope I will be able to unlock before the next episode. Yeah, you'll just have to see, but for the time being, we are going to pick up Wits, and we are going to complete your request, RxR. So thank you once more for the recommendation. Now, the only question is, who are we going to take out in favor of Wits? You tell me. I'm not going to be making any final decisions, unless I have to. I'm kind of eyeing Rosie here, but don't mind my opinion. Let me know who you want to switch out for Wits, because eventually we are going to have to be switching players from time to time. What we also might do is just rotate between different players, but that is something uh, we can always consider if things don't quite work out. You know, thinking about it, it's really a toss-up between Azuma National and the International All-Stars, because the International All-Stars are going to give us a better version of Aphrodite, but in Azuma National, are going to give us a better version of Nathan, of Samford, and Hot. No, actually, it's just not a toss-up. It's literally not a toss-up. We have to do it for Hawkins. But I think with that being said, that will be all for this episode. So if you watched up to this point, thank you very much, as per usual. And if you have more recommendations for players to recruit to put on this team, then by all means, go ahead, scroll down to the little comment section, and let me know who you want to see. But yeah, on that note, thank you very much once again, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.